This past Sunday, May 26, a second Ukrainian suicide drone attack attempted to strike a long-range radar deep inside of Russia. An expert who spoke to Reuters told the wire service that the primary function of the facility is to, quote, detect and track intercontinental ballistic missiles and determine if Russia was under nuclear attack. Another expert, Theodore Postel, an MIT professor and former scientific advisor to the Pentagon, sounded the alarm. I am writing to alert you to an extremely alarming new development that poses a direct and immediate threat to the security of the United States. The Ukrainians have now attacked a second critical Russian nuclear strategic early warning radar at Orsk. This is a very serious situation, Postal added. The radar coverage lost by these attacks on these radars greatly reduces the warning time against attacks on Moscow from the Mediterranean Indian Ocean. My estimates, based on real analysis, not bullshit, are that the early warning radar time has been reduced from about 15 to 16 minutes to about 10 to 11. This warning period could very well eliminate the possibility of any time for deliberation on the part of the Russian leaders if they are faced with the decision about whether to launch Russian strategic nuclear forces in response to a nuclear attack on Moscow. The Russian political leadership in Moscow would have almost no time to assess the situation if they believed that a possible attack from the south was imminent. The extreme time pressure on the Russian leadership can thus significantly increase the chances of a catastrophic nuclear incident. The Ukrainian attack on the radar defense system in Orsk follows a similar one in a facility of the city of Armavir. Calling the attack a big deal, the Warzone publication wrote that Russia is losing a strategic early warning radar system in a new twist in the Ukraine conflict that could have further reaching ramifications. The website further noted that the attack looked to be the first of its kind attack on a site linked to Russia's general strategic defense. As such, it points to a new and worrisome dimension to the conflict, especially when it comes to the potential use of nuclear weapons. The radars at the facility are a key part of Russia's larger strategic early warning network, and their loss, even temporarily, could only degrade the country's ability to detect incoming nuclear threats. There are also concerns about how this could impact the ability of Russia's overall strategic warning network to evaluate potential threats and eliminate false positives to possible loss of overlapping coverage in certain areas. The website continues, Beyond that, it has been pointed out that the attack on Armavir could meet the conditions that the Russian government laid out publicly in 2020 for actions that could trigger a nuclear retaliatory strike. Russia's early warning network is part of the country's broader nuclear deterrent. As Ukraine continues to try to wipe out Russia's ability to detect incoming missiles, Western elites have launched a new public relations offensive to prime the public for a policy that could very well escalate to a new world war. In the past month, a startling number of Western officials have called for Ukraine to be given the green light to use Western weapons inside of Russian territory. Beyond mere calls for it, the UK has quietly lifted its ban on the use of its monarchy missiles inside Russian territory. Just as Russia is striking inside of Ukraine, you can quite understand why Ukraine feels the need to make sure it's defending itself, UK Foreign Minister and alleged severed pig's head fornicator Lord David Cameron said in Kiev. Former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has also endorsed the idea. Give the Ukrainians what they need. Give them the weapons. Give them the authorization to use those weapons outside their own borders if they're not absolutely ludicrous that the Ukrainians should be forbidden from doing what Putin uh, is doing himself and uh, attacking Ukrainian forces. And why on earth should the Ukrainian, Ukrainians be able uh, to attack Russian forces mustering on their borders? Give them those weapons, give them the attack weapons, give them the budget, give them the air defenses that they need. It's the single best investment that we can make in the defense of the whole Euro-Atlantic area. Across the Pacific, the starting gun was fired by none other than Victoria Newland, a bona fide swan creature and chief American architect of the Maidan coup. These are the largest gains we've seen in Russia, as James just explained. President Zelensky directly blaming the delay of foreign aid. Can they turn this around? I think they can certainly turn this around, Martha, but the six-month delay certainly made a difference. The front line of, for Ukraine needs the artillery that we are sending. They need more air defenses. They need to be able to stop these Russian attacks that are coming from bases inside Russia. So I think there's also a question of whether we, the United States, and our allies ought to give them more help in hitting Russian bases, which heretofore we've not been willing to do. And, and do you think they should? I think if the attacks are coming directly from over the line in Russia, that those bases ought to be fair game, whether they are where missiles are being launched from or where they are where uh, troops are being supplied from. I think it's time for that.
Meanwhile, Cameron's American counterpart, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, is also reportedly pushing the Biden administration to greenlight the use of its weapons inside of Russian territory. Via the New York Times, since the first American shipments of sophisticated weapons to Ukraine, President Biden has never wavered on one prohibition. President Vladimir Zelensky had to agree to never fire them into Russian territory, insisting it would violate Mr. Biden's mandate to, quote, avoid World War III. But the consensus around that policy is fraying. Propelled by the State Department, there is now a rigorous debate inside the administration over relaxing the ban to allow Ukrainians to hit missile and artillery launch sites just over the border in Russia, targets that Mr. Zelensky says have enabled Moscow's recent territorial gains. The proposal, pressed by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken after a sobering visit to Kiev last week, is still in its formative stages, and it is not clear how many of his colleagues among Mr. Biden's inner circle have signed on. But officials involved in the deliberation said Mr. Blinken's position had changed because the Russians had opened a new front in the war with devastating results. Now, the pressure is mounting on the United States to help Ukraine target Russian military sites, even if Washington wants to maintain its ban on attacking oil refineries and other Russian infrastructure with American-provided arms. Britain, usually in lockstep with Washington on war strategy, has quietly lifted its own restrictions so that its storm shadow cruise systems can be used to target Russia more broadly. This Monday, May 27th, Joseph Burrell, the European Union's foreign minister, noted that the issue had been discussed in a meeting by members of the European Union and the Ukrainian defense minister, Dmitry Kuleba. With, uh, with Kuleba, we discuss about uh, the needs of Ukraine to continue the self-defense, in particular, as you know, more air defense systems, in particular more patriots, and also the lifting of restrictions on the use of Western weapons against Russian military in Russia. This is a growing debate. More and more, we take uh, very much um, into consideration the fact that Ukraine has to resist against attacks which has been launched against his territory from Russian territory, and some member states has been lifting the restrictions for Ukrainians to be able to use our military support to respond to the Russian attacks from the Russian territory, and not only from the Ukrainian territory occupied by Russian troops. Just as significantly, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg made similar remarks. I think the time has come for allies to consider whether they should lift some of the restrictions they have put on um, the use of weapons they have donated to, uh, to Ukraine, uh, because uh, especially now when a lot of the fighting is going on in Kharkiv, close to the border, uh, to deny uh, Ukraine the possibility of using these weapons against legitimate military targets uh, on Russian territory makes it very hard for them to defend themselves. So to be clear, you're asking the US to lift the restrictions on the use of American weapons over Russian territory? I believe the time has come for allies to uh, consider whether they should lift uh, some of the restrictions that are imposed uh, on uh, weapons donated to Ukraine. Russia, for its part, has issued a direct response to the potential use of United Kingdom and, by extension, Western weapons inside of their territory. On May 6, in a Russian foreign ministry statement, we directly said that in response to strikes using British weapons against the territory of our country, we may strike any British military objects and weaponry in Ukraine and beyond. Such a response by Russia could invoke NATO Article 5, which would force all members of the alliance into a direct hot war with Russia. And while many things remain unclear, one thing is for sure, it won't be the sons and daughters of the elites pushing this policy who suffer its consequences. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.